this is going to work. So I'm Marilyn San Clemente of um, Marilyn's Creative Playground. My website is stampwithmarilyn.com. And thanks for stopping by tonight. So what I'd like to do tonight is I want to give you a follow-up on um, the projects that I did last week where I used the in colors. Oops, I see my hand. <laughs> okay, where I used the, um, the new in colors and designed a couple of cards. And then I did follow up and uh, finish some of the designs that with some other colors, some of the other new in colors. I used two of the in colors last week. And I did um, three more cards and finished that. And I posted those this morning. I did finish them last week, but did not get time to take pictures or um, uh, get them posted. I was busy working on my event that was on Saturday. So this past Saturday, my group and I had our, I don't even know what, seventh or eighth um, Creative Crafters Escape. And it was a lot of fun as always. We had uh, 22 people plus us, so 24, 25 people total. We had a great time. And uh, if you're in the Boston area, our next one is tentatively scheduled for Saturday, September 21st, but we don't have a definite yet on the location. So um, I will be sending a message out as soon as I know more that uh, we have the location that we want. So anyway, um, so that was a great weekend, and but it's a lot of prep. I need to pack up a lot of my room and move over to the church. So um, it is a lot of prep work, and I just didn't get time to post everything to um, my blog or to the Facebook page. So, okay, let's get started, and I will see if I can turn this without getting my hand in the way. Okay, there we go. All right, and I think I have it. And who's on? Linda's on. Trudy. Hi, Trudy. Glad you guys could join us. So the five new in colors that we talked about last week are the Purple Posy, and this is what the ribbon looks like. This is the ink. I stamped the ink. I, I uh, punched some paper and some of the designer paper. And then this is the ribbon, and I made this little chart for myself so that I can keep things straight in my head because I have a horrible memory. So, and last week, um, I showed you, I think, I'm not sure which cards I did with you last week. I think I did, I believe I did this. I know I did one of the daisy cards. So I think I used that one, which is the peacock. And I think I did the butterfly card with you. So the, um, the purple posy. And uh, what I used for this one was Beauty Abounds and the new butterfly set. And then I used the new um, Purple Posy designer paper. And then I just stamped some of the background, some of the polka dot background from the Beauty Abound set. And then this card, I used the fern that's part of the new Daisy Lane set, which is a really cool set. I'm going to show you some of that tonight. And there is a new punch that fits also with the old punch. So this new set has a larger daisy and it has a smaller daisy. And I'm going to show you something really cool that you can do with that. And here's the old set. So the two sets actually fit really nice together. And, you know, they both have, um, the older set has the centers for the flowers. It has a couple of leaves with it. Um, this one doesn't have any leaves, but it has a stem with leaves on it. Um, and it has the fern, and then it has more sentiments. So, um, okay, then the um, Rococo Rose color, I used this, and I used one of the different patterns. I used the diamond pattern, and then I used the Stitch All Around um, stamp set, which has that really pretty doily type look to it with Enjoy Your Special Day. And then this one, Seaside Spray, um, I used the new um, stamp set, which I love, and I can't remember the name of it. It was in the Spring Occasions catalog, and it did carry over, but I love this saying, you are like a diamond, resilient, strong, and beautiful. And that is for my daughter, who just graduated with her master's degree and is searching for a job and is getting a little bit discouraged. But she is resilient, strong, and beautiful, and she's very smart, and I know she's going to get a really good job. And the right job will come along. We just need to wait a little bit and keep searching. So, 
Emily, this card is for you. And then this last card is made with the terracotta tile. And again, I use the two daisies. Um, I stamped one daisy with the yellow. I stamped the second daisy with the terracotta. And I used the fern background. And what I did here was I layered the terracotta tile designer paper on the terracotta. And then I used, um, I believe that's pumpkin pie um, to highlight it. So that looks really nice together. Those are That's a good color combination. So there's the um, follow-up to my in-color analysis. And so what I was gonna show you today was, I'm gonna show you a card that I was working on with the Daisy Lane stamp set. Um, one of my, Don Line and I, are working on putting together a class with the Daisy Lane stamp set. And so I will be putting that class online in a couple of weeks. And what we decided to use for this was the mosaic designer paper, which I really like. Um, so one of the things that I was gonna talk about also was, so for my design process, what I like to do is I'll take a paper and I'll take a stamp set. And I think the Daisy Lane is a good stamp set that fits with the mosaic paper. And when you look on the back of your designer papers, it lists all the colors or coordinating colors that are in that paper. So what I do is I just pull a couple of sheets of each of the colors. So Blushing Bride, so Saffron. I have uh, Whisper White and also Vanilla goes with this as well. Um, soft Suede garden green, and then the new terracotta tile, and mint macaron. And then also, um, the, sea, the sea foam looks really nice with it too, which is what I used for the base of this card. But one of the things that I really, really like about this paper um, is it's got this really cool 3D design, and I don't think you'll be able to see it, but um, it's really neat. Let's see if I can, oops, as I drop it. Let's see if I can, if I turn this a little bit, what you'll see, you can probably see it shimmering a little bit. So it's got this embossed 3D design on it. And then the back side is just a regular flat um, piece of designer paper without the embossing. So for this, each, each sheet has an embossed image on it. So this particular sheet, oops, let's see. This particular sheet has the birds embossed. And then the next one, that's the sheet that I just used. It has the stripes. This one has the flowers embossed, and actually that would be really pretty with the daisies. I'm definitely gonna do something with that in the daisies. Um, this one's neat. This is the, this is just a, a really pretty leaf pattern, and actually that one would look great with a Tropical Chic stamp set. I, I, I think I'm going to uh, play around with Tropical Chic. I'll pull that back out, and that might be a really good paper for that stamp set. And then, let's see. And then we have this design, which is um, kind of a Moroccan, it looks like a Moroccan tile to me. And the last one is this rose pattern where the roses are embossed. And that's beautiful. Um, I love this one too. So, and the back sides of this are just regular um, designer paper. So if you don't want to use the embossed side, you can use the back side. So that's got the pretty yellow kind of leaf pattern. This one has that other pattern, but it's not embossed. Again, um, this one has the roses, but in a yellow design and they're not embossed. This particular paper has the birds and it's the other one that goes with that. Um, here's that Moroccan um, tile design. Uh, this is the paper that I used for the cards that we're making tonight and that's got a really pretty floral um, daisy pattern to it. And then here's the, oh, I already flipped that one over. Okay, you saw that one. So you saw the back side of that. So in all, there are the 12 designs, um, two sheets of each and double-sided. Um, but what's really cool, again, about this paper is the fact that, um, that it is embossed and so it's very pretty. And it's a little bit heavier because it's embossed as well. So what I do is when I pull those papers out, then I just I just put them in with my designer paper. So if I'm going someplace and I wanna work on something, I can just grab it and I know I have the coordinating colors that go with that designer paper. So that's kind of one of my little um, secrets to um, how, I, how I design things um, when I have a new, a new paper and a new stamp set. So, um, so what I've done here, 
I'll show you this card. Oops. See if I can make some room for myself here. Okay. So what I've done is this is the soft sea foam um, as the card base. And so we're going to start with that. So we'll start with the soft sea foam and I'll fold that for my card base. I should have grabbed my bone folder. If you don't have your, oof, wow, I guess my nails are, I guess I need to cut my nails. It's time for me to cut my nails <laughs> or file them down. Um, if you don't have your bone folder, I was gonna say you can go over it with your nail, but it looks like I almost, I almost started to rip this here. But anyway, okay, so we won't use that background, but I can just show you how the card goes together. So the next um, piece is a piece of four inch by five and a quarter piece of soft sea foam. So it's the same color. And that is embossed with this new embossing folder. And I'm trying to remember the name of the embossing folder. I don't have all the names of everything down yet. Um, but again, it's that one that looks like the Moroccan tile. And, um, and then what I have is a strip, a one and three quarters inch strip of the designer paper. So I'm just going to attach that. And where's my adhesive? There's my adhesive. So I'm just going to attach that. Oops. Oh, new roll. So just got to get it going. There we go. Whoops. There we go. Now it's working. Okay. And a lot of times what I like to do is if I'm trying to cut something as the same length um, as a layer is I'll cut it a little bit longer because then what I like to do is I will flip it over and I'll just use the edge of what I'm trimming um, to trim the layer. And then they are exactly the same length and I don't have to worry about them not matching up um, correctly. So, and then next, and I know what I didn't do. I didn't grab, oh, I've got Old Olive here. Okay, for the next card. So we're going to use Old Olive today for our ink, for the color. And I have cut a piece of um, very vanilla because this particular pattern um, has the vanilla in the background. And that's one of the things that's a little bit unique about this designer paper is most designer papers either have a background of vanilla or white. This one happens to have both on different sheets depending upon which sheet you're using. So, um, which is a little bit different. It's not typical stamping up protocol, but um, anyway. So what I'm going to do is, oops, and I don't need that piece. I do need that. Okay, so I'm going to stamp, and I need to find my long stamp. Okay, and here's the stamp set. And I mounted the daisies earlier, but I did not mount the, the um, stem. Okay, so I'm going to turn this over. I've got a little bit of an ink smudge there for my fingers because I've been stamping all day. And so of course my fingers are inky. Okay, so I'm going to stamp this stem. Okay. And attach that to a piece of the terracotta tile. And this piece is two inches by four and a half. So the terracotta tile is two and a quarter by four and three quarters. So I'm going to put that on like so. Okay. And now we're going to stamp our daisies and what I really like about this where did I put that piece of white there we go or that piece of vanilla there we go okay okay so I'm going to stamp my daisies and what I did for this to get this dimension on the card was I stamped the larger daisy with the terracotta tile and I stamped it twice and then I stamped the smaller daisy um, with Mango Melody, which I stamped off a little bit. Okay, so let's... Okay, 
and my terracotta tile is very juicy. Okay. And then I'm going to stamp this with the mango. And I'm going to stamp the mango off because I want it to have a yellow look. Um, but I thought that the mango would look good with the terracotta tile because it just has, it's yellow, but it's a shade of orange. So if that makes sense. There we go. And this is what it looks like when you stamp off with it. So you actually get... So we can decide which one we like better. Okay, and then, oops, while I, I didn't have it out, I should have done that while I had it out. Um, when I have the terracotta tile out, I want to stamp that little saying, the friend. Okay, and where did my piece go? There it is. So I have that lined up here. And if I'm short on blocks, I'll do blocks on two sides, <laughs> or I'll, I'll uh, put stamps on both sides, each side of the block. Blocks have two sides, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so we're going to attach that to here. Put my ink away. Attach this. Okay, and then, oh, and I've got ink all over my hands again because I'm getting it on everything. Okay, and so my sentiment is ready to go. So I'm going to put that there, and now we're going to cut out the flowers. And what I found with the daisies is if you round off that corner, then your punch will fit a little bit better. And what I like to do with these is I always use the punch upside down. Um, because then you can line it up and get an exact fit. And actually, let me turn it a little bit. Okay. Oops. There we go. And second one. And then now... I'm going to use the smaller daisy punch. Not get that. There we go. And then I'm going to trim this so that I can get in at the angle that I need to get in to punch that out. Okay. So much for that piece. Okay, I have all my daisies punched out. So now I have, these are the two that I stamped off. So they're a little bit lighter colored. This one's a little bit darker. And then this is the terracotta tile. So what I'm going to do now is, hi Steph, welcome. Um, what I'm going to do now is put these all together. So I'm going to use a glue dot and attach the daisies like so and then i'm going to use the two daisies that are a little bit more yellow And there we go. Um, so now I have made that kind of a 3D daisy. And what you could do if you wanted to is you could take, if you put your thumb in the center, you can kind of curl these a little bit. Um, make your daisy even a little bit more layered. Okay. And now I'm going to use a dimensional attach that to my card. I don't want to, yeah, I'm going to bring those up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to attach that to the stem. 
And then in the center, I wanna put one of those gold faceted gems that looks like the center of a daisy. And I'll pull that off. One of the things that I love about the gems that Stamping Up makes is that they are pre-adhesive, so it's really nice. Okay, now I have that little smudge of ink because my, my hands are all inky um, from stamping today. So what I'm going to do is just cover that up with the friend. And there we go. There's our card. And I'm actually not going to attach it to the card base but since I ripped the card base. I will wait and I'll attach it later. Um, but that's that's what our card looks like. Very pretty. I like that. So stay tuned. Next week I will have the daisy class ready to go. And uh, um, if you're not local to me, you can sign on online and um, purchase the class and make it along with me um, because I will videotape that. So there's our daisy card. I'll keep that there. And I'll put that one on top. Okay. And next, what I wanted to show you tonight was another one of my favorite. My, I, I think that this is my favorite. I just need to play with it a little bit more. But um, I started to today. And um, I love this new peacock set. And I'm trying to remember what page of the catalog. My catalog is not next to me. Ah, how come my catalog's not next to me? It is towards the front. I think it's 30-something or maybe 60-something. But this new Peacock set is absolutely gorgeous. It's called Royal Peacock. I'll put these over here. There we go. And it comes with, for the designer paper, has a coordinating package of um, foil with it. And the designer paper has a foil, um, a foil embossed image on it. So this is the designer paper. And then this is the foil. So there's three designs of the designer paper. And there's four sheets of each. So there's 12 sheets total. And there is no design on the back side because it, again, it does have that foil embossed look. And then the, this is the foil that goes with it. So, and I just love this paper. So I actually have an idea in my mind, but I have not made the card yet. So we'll make it together and we'll see how it comes out because sometimes, as you know, um, your ideas can come out great. And then sometimes when you look at it, what looks good in your head doesn't necessarily <laughs> look good on paper. Um, so the colors that this coordinates with are Old Olive, blueberry bushel, um, and the peacock, and then the um, also Bermuda Bay, and then I added in Calypso Coral because I think that that's a pretty combination with it as well. So this is what I have for the combination. And there's all that, yep, okay. My video is a couple of minutes behind, so. Um, so this set, I'll put this right here so we can all look at it while we're looking at this. So this set is really neat. It has, <clears throat> let's see, it has this peacock stamp, which might be a little bit hard to see because these are clear stamps, but it has this, pe this stamp of the full peacock. It has a grouping of daisies over here, and then it has um, a piece that fits in between the peacock to color the feathers in a bit. It is a little bit tricky to line up. I did get it to line up and it's a little bit tricky, but I did the peacock in a couple of different ways and um, was playing around with lining it up and some different coloring techniques with it. So it comes with a die to cut out the outline of the fully stamped peacock, a die to cut out, you'll see, a very detailed peacock with a lot of um, really pretty um, floral floral parts to his feathers. It comes with three leaves and then two little dies that cut the grouping of flowers out. So there's quite a bit to this set. And what I found was, as I was doing this, um, 
this is, of course, one of the new die sets because Stamping Up has um, changed their die vendor. They're no longer working with Sizzix. And what I have found is these dies, particularly this detailed die, cut much, much better and are much easier to get apart and the pieces come out much better. Um, you're not you, you're still using the pokey tool a little bit, but you're not using it nearly as much as you used to. And the pieces do cut much easier. So, um, so I really like that. And then this set also has some really nice sentiments with it. So proud of you. You did it. You are incredible. Here's to an exciting future full of new adventures and congrats on such an amazing accomplishment. So I think that this would be actually a really good set for um, graduates. So unfortunately, it was not when my daughter graduated, but um, who knows? Next graduation she'll have, um, we'll see. So the other thing, so what I did, what I like to do is when I get a set like this with um, lots of dies to it, I like to cut the dies out and kind of make a cheat sheet for myself. So this suite of products also has these beautiful, beautiful um, rhinestone, colored rhinestones that go with um, this set. There's a Bermuda Bay, there's Old Olive, um, there's a, a rose color. I think that might be the Rococo rose, but I'm not sure. There's a purpley color, and then the blueberry bushel um, of the um, rhinestones. So there's five different colors of rhinestones that go with this. So what's really cool is um, it cuts out the whole um, peacock. If you stamp the whole peacock, um, it does cut out um, these cute little bushes that you can use, the, the grouping of daisies, and then it has this one separate peacock feather. And then this is the detailed peacock. And I really haven't done a lot with that yet, but I will. And what I was gonna show you tonight was a couple of different things that I cut out. So um, I did cut out some of these, some of the, um, the stems that go with it. And then I did the peacock. So this is a solid peacock um, cut out of solid paper um, without being stamped. This, this particular image is the image that actually does fit in between um, to fill in some of these little to fill in the gaps with the peacock. And I'll show you what I did with that in a minute. And then this is the peacock stamped in um, Highland Heather. This one's Bermuda Bay. This is Coastal Cabana, so it's a little bit lighter. And this is the Blueberry Bushel. And then this is the detailed die that I was talking about. So what you could do is you could cut the peacock out and then line it up. I would line it this way, like this. And that will give you some of the detail and you can see through. Um, that's very pretty. So as I said, I need some time. I'll play with this a little bit. So next week I'll come back and I'll show you some different things that I've done with this. So what I did today, for this was, let me put all my pieces away so I don't lose them. So today, oops, oh, there's my pieces. Okay. <laughs> what I did today was I stamped the peacock in blueberry bushel and then I did, I did fill in, sorry about that, with um, this piece with the coordinating piece for the peacock and as you can see it did stamp in between the feathers and it fills in the feathers a little bit and it does fill in up here um, but not quite completely um, so that was one that i did and then this is one that i did where i stamped the peacock and blueberry bushel on white so it started like this and then i colored it in with my markers i have the Bermuda Bay, and I colored in the back feathers with the Bermuda Bay, and then I colored in these, the little um, peacock, peacock dots that are on the tail feathers um, with the Old Olive and the Bermuda Bay, and I outlined it with the Bermuda Bay, and then I went over it, I did the base of the body with the So Saffron, 
And then this, I went over with the Highland Heather. Let's see if I can find my ink pad. Not sure what I did with my Highland Heather ink pad, of course. And I used an aqua painter. And what you can see happened is because I stamped this with the blueberry bushel, and it was an aqua painter, and our colored inks are water-based inks, the blue and the purple started to run together a little bit. But I, I, I like that look because I think that that gives it, um, you know, a peacock's feathers are never all one color. And depending upon how the feathers turn, you know, they look, it looks different ways. So, um, so I think that's a good, here's the Highland Heather. So I think that's a good um, look for that. So if I were to do that again, what I did, oops, let's see here. I'm gonna squeeze my Highland Heather ink pad. And I'm gonna get a nice little puddle of ink. And then I have an aqua painter. And I want the aqua painter to be damp but not wet. And so I'm just gonna pull up a little bit of that, that ink. And I'm gonna fill in around the feathers. And it is gonna pull the blue a little bit because uh, the blue is a water-based ink, the blueberry bushel. But I kinda like that look. There we go, like so. So tonight I was a little bit um, concerned. About six o'clock, my internet went down. <laughs> I ended up calling Comcast and had to reset it. So we turned it off, turned it on a couple of times, and um, the third time we tried, it worked. So it's back, and I was able to come on tonight but um, I was thinking, what do I do if I don't have internet? How do I get on to do a Facebook Live? But anyway, the night was saved. I got it back. So that's how I colored those feathers. And then, like I said, I used the marker and I colored the outline of these. I won't bore you with doing it all. Um, and then I did the center with the green to get the different colors. And then all I did here was fill in the body with the Bermuda Bay as well. So that's how we did our peacock. So now let's put it together into a card. And as I said, I have a I have an idea in mind. We'll see how it works out. <laughs> so um, so what we're going to do is we'll use these two and, um, okay, grab my pieces that I cut, I pre-cut. Okay. There we go. Okay, so one idea that I had was to was to use the blueberry bushel designer paper and mount a piece of white behind it. But before I do that, I think what I'm going to do is I want to emboss that piece. And then the other idea I had was why not do the opposite? So I'm going to do one card with the blueberry bushel on the outside, um, the blueberry bushel foil, and the white on the inside. And then the second piece, I'm going to do the white on the outside with the blueberry bushel in the middle and add the peacock over it. And we'll see which one we like better. Um, so what I want to do with these two pieces is to emboss them. Oops, sorry. Okay, I don't want to emboss the foil, but I want to emboss the two pieces of white. And one of the things that I wanted to show you is um, as any new catalog, Stamping Up has come out with some new embossing folders, but because Stamping Up, oh, uh-oh, there goes my board. Okay, we'll move that out of the way. But as with any new catalog, um, 
I'm going to try and move this up a little bit so we can see. Oops, is that going to hold? Okay, there we go. Okay, um, there's new embossing folders, and then there's the older embossing folders. So this is the new mosaic pattern that I was talking about that I used for the um, the daisy card. And then this is the one of the folders that carried over that was in the Spring Occasions catalog this year. It was the lacy one. And so what I wanted to show you is... Um, that isn't actually what I wanted to get. Okay, was... Um, because Stamping Up changed vendors, the newer folders are not quite as thick as the old ones. So with the old fold folders, we were using, we would turn our plate like so. We would um, I have to turn this so it doesn't hit my light. Okay, so we would open up to the first tab and, um, and then we would only use one plate with the folder to emboss with this particular, with the lacy one. So with the older, thicker folders that we had. And with the new folders, because they're a little bit thinner, you're not going to flip that, um, that card. You're going to leave it like so, and you're going to use one plate, only one plate, but on top of that you're not going to um, you're not going to flip that one piece so let me show you what I'm thinking here this took a little bit of practice on my part Oops, to get it to go right there we go and all you can see is my hand okay so here we go like that. So if we were going to do the lacy folder, so let's use the lacy folder for the other piece that we're going to do. For that particular one, we're going to flip that card. So it's going to go through this way. And again, I'm only using one plate but I have flipped, I have taken that one top layer off. So that's gonna look like this. And there's the lazy folder. Okay. So just a point with the, um, the new embossing folders that are in the catalog. And you can see when you look at the embossing folders, that the newer ones are um, a bit thinner. So, okay, so let's put our cards together and we'll see how they come out. So what I have done is I've used the new nested dies. These are the nested labels dies, and I love these. Um, they stitch both on inside and outside. So this was one piece of white that I used. And um, as you can see, they're stitching on the outside of where it's cut and on the die on the piece that you cut out as well. So what we're going to do is we'll do this one first and again so then I cut this piece of the um, blueberry bushel peacock paper and you can see that because it was a nested die uh, double stitch die that they're stitching on the outside and the inside. So for one project, we're going to use this. So I'm going to attach, and I'll bring that back down again. Oops. Okay. Bring that back down. And I'm going to attach my white to the back side of this frame that we've made. Sure, I get all the way up on that. Okay, so that's going to look like this. And then I'm going to put that. Actually, I think I need that on a piece of white cardstock rather than a blue. Oops. 
as I trip all over myself. So I'm going to take a eight and a half by five and a half piece of white cardstock, fold that in half, and then that will be my card base. <clears throat> and okay, so now we'll attach that. attach our peacock and as you can tell when I stamped the peacock I didn't get it the way I wanted to the first time so I turned it over and stamped again and this was the peacock that I used I lined up the um, two-part stamp okay go. Peel those dimensionals off. And we'll do that. Okay. And then this card. Oops. I'm going to take the white. I will attach that Oops, got a little piece of green olive, old olive paper there. And I'm going to attach the frame. Oops, if I can do this without ripping it, because that tape is very sticky. Okay, attach the frame. And now... What I'm thinking is, is I can pop this up. Make this pop up. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna line that up. Like so. So that's gonna be just a little bit raised because I have that on the dimensionals. And then I'm going to attach the peacock to that. That's pretty. Put a little bit of adhesive on, like so. Now, as I said, um, I had not done this card ahead of time. So sometimes when you see things in your head, they don't quite look the way that you want them to. And what I like about this is I really like this contrast and I like the way this pops up. Um, and I like the coloring on this card. This card to me is a little bit too plain because the peacock's a little too white. So I'm gonna go back and color him some more, but I'm thinking what I might do, and I'll play with, I'll do this um, either later tonight or tomorrow, is I wanna take this white background and I wanna use kind of a wash of these colors. So maybe a wash of the Highland Heather and the Bermuda Bay to do this background and then cut that out and put this um, foil in the middle and I think that that would be beautiful but this one to me looks very plain and I am going to work on coloring that in so now the other thing that you could do is we have these beautiful um, rhinestone colored rhinestone jewels that go with the peacock pa paper oops if I can get it open there we go And what I'm going to do, let me grab my little tool. 
I'm going to take this, oops, and I'll put the jewels. I can't get them, ah, why can't I get them up? They've changed the backing on this paper. It's almost waxy. Anyway, okay, there we go. So what you can do is put some of the jewels on here. I think that would be pretty. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm gonna mix them up a little bit. Do some different colors. The blue one. Yeah, they changed the backing on this. The paper's, yeah, the paper is uh, a little different, and there we go. My tool is not getting underneath it. But anyway, you can see, you can see what I'm thinking. I think you can see what I'm thinking. Oops. Man. There we go. So I'll fill that in. Um, the other thing that you could do is to use a Wink of Stella pen to um, highlight these as well. That would be another way to do it. So anyway, I have a whole bunch of ideas floating through my head right now with this. Um, peacock design and I love this peacock and the colors so stay tuned and I will put some ideas together and I will post them on my site over the next few days so that's it for tonight thanks for stopping by my creative playground and enjoy I hope you've enjoyed this tonight if you are ready to place an order um, and you use the host code for June, R-U-7-T-G-H-B-Y, then I will send you a sampler of the Magnolia paper. I'll send you a six by six sampler of the Magnolia paper, which is gorgeous. Um, and also, if you're not on my newsletter um, and you'd like, um, I send out a weekly newsletter with ideas um, lots of inspiration. I'll show some of the cards that I'm working on. Um, I'll give um, tips and tricks as well. Um, you can go out to stampwithmarilyn.com and sign up for my newsletter. And as a little gift for signing up, you'll receive um, my hints about how to design using sketches, um, which is one of my favorite ways to design. Um, It helps inspire me. I, I'm not good at putting images together and figuring things out. So I love using a sketch, designer paper, and the coordinating cardstock, which is one of the things that I love about stamping up is everything coordinates. So it's easy to pull together. So again, thanks for stopping by tonight and have a great week. I will see you next Monday. Take care. <laughs>